One of our regular Muslim commenters is a Muhammad Hijab fan, so he usually just posts insults. But he recently decided to post a video request. He asked me to make a video about the Quran passage where Jesus preaches Islam as a baby. Let's read the comment. David Wood, I'm a Muslim and I want you to answer my question, please, and make a video of it, please. Surah 19, verse 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. Well, my Muslim friend, I know you've insulted me in the past. Am I going to insult you in return? No. Am I going to insult your prophet in return? No. Well, I might insult your prophet a little, but that just can't be avoided in situations like this. Let's just say I'm not going to insult your prophet any more than I normally would. Instead, I'm going to do something far, far worse. I'm going to grant your video request. I have absolutely no clue why you would ever want me to make a video about a passage that you should be scrambling to hide, but you did say please twice in your video, and as everyone knows, I give the people what they want. And you want a video about Surah 19, verses 28 to 35. Here's the passage. We could start even earlier for context, but we'd end up seeing even more problems. Let's just look at what our Muslim friend asked us about. This is shortly after Jesus is born. Some Jews come to Mary to accuse her of committing a sin by getting pregnant with Jesus before she was married. And they say in verse 28, O sister of Aaron, thy father was not an evil man, nor was thy mother unchaste. Sister of Aaron? Was Mary the mother of Jesus the sister of Aaron? No. But Mary, the mother of Jesus, has the same Arabic name as Miriam, the sister of Aaron and Moses. And since Mary, the mother of Jesus, has the same Arabic name as Miriam, the sister of Aaron and Moses, Allah thinks they're the same person, even though they lived 14 centuries apart. So according to Allah, two completely different women from completely different centuries are the same person. And you Muslims say the Trinity is confusing? Verse 29. Then she pointed to him, to baby Jesus. They said, how shall we speak to one who is yet a child in the cradle? Good question. Verse 30. He, baby Jesus, said, truly I am a servant of God. He has given me the book. Really? What book? What book did baby Jesus bring, Muslims? And made me a prophet. Verse 31. He has made me blessed wheresoever I may be, and has enjoined upon me prayer and almsgiving so long as I live. Almsgiving so long as I live? Wait a minute. Jesus is still alive, according to the Quran. He never died. So he's still giving alms in paradise? Who's he giving alms to? Verse 32 and has made me dutiful toward my mother, and he has not made me domineering wretched. Verse 33, peace be upon me, ha, <laughs> peace be upon me, that's Muhammad's catchphrase in Muhammad's boom boom room. Peace be upon me the day I was born, the day I die, and the day I am raised alive. Now, if little baby Jesus here is really a prophet, he should say, according to Islam, peace be upon me the day I was born, and the day I'm raised to paradise without dying, and the day I return to earth to break all crosses and kill all pigs, and the day I eventually die after that, and the day I'm raised alive after that. Verse 34, that is Jesus, son of Mary, a statement of the truth which they doubt. Who doubts it? Who's the they who doubt this story about Jesus claiming to be a mere prophet of Allah? Well, once we realize that Muhammad is once again plagiarizing a story from other people and twisting it into something Islamic, we can see who this story is responding to. Muhammad is plagiarizing and distorting a story from the Arabic Infancy Gospel, which is also called the Syriac Infancy Gospel because scholars aren't sure exactly when the text was translated into Arabic. The Syriac version goes back to the 5th or 6th century. It was available in Arabic sometime after that. The Arabic Infancy Gospel begins like this. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, 
With the help and favor of the Most High, we begin to write a book of the miracles of our Lord and Master and Savior, Jesus Christ, which is called the Gospel of the Infancy. In the peace of the Lord, amen. We find what follows in the book of Joseph the High Priest, who lived in the time of Christ. Some say that he is Caiaphas. He has said that Jesus spoke, and indeed, when he was lying in his cradle, said to Mary his mother, I am Jesus, the Son of God, the Lagos, whom thou hast brought forth, as the angel Gabriel announced to thee, and my Father has sent me for the salvation of the world. Again, this story was written centuries after the time of Christ. It's a forgery. It was only taken seriously by people who couldn't tell the difference between a legitimate early source and an apocryphal late source. But we happen to know someone who definitely couldn't tell the difference between authentic sources and forgeries. His name was Muhammad. Notice what we have in this forgery. Jesus speaks from the cradle and starts preaching Christian theology. He says, I am Jesus, the Son of God, the Lagos. My Father has sent me for the salvation of the world. Muhammad was obviously asked about this story because he responds to it in the Quran. His response is that Jesus didn't preach Christian theology from the cradle. He preached Islamic theology from the cradle. So instead of saying, I am the Son of God sent by my Father for the salvation of the world, he says, I am a servant of Allah. Allah has given me a book, and Allah has made me a prophet. Then Muhammad's version adds some other Islamic teachings. Now, if you'd like some additional evidence that Muhammad was familiar with this infancy gospel and that he was responding to it, just read the last verse that our Muslim friend asked me to address. Verse 35. It is not for God to take a child. Glory be to him. When he decrees a thing, he only says to it, Be, and it is. Allah doesn't have a child. Allah doesn't have a son. What is Allah responding to here? There isn't a single word in this passage in the Quran about Jesus being the Son of God. But Allah is responding to the claim that Jesus is the Son of God. What's he responding to? It isn't in the Quran. And here's where we have to understand that Muhammad is responding to an infancy gospel where Jesus, from the cradle, claims to be the Son of God. Muhammad's listeners would have understood that. So Muhammad responds to the claim in the Arabic infancy gospel by insisting that Allah has no son. But notice that in the Arabic infancy gospel, Jesus also claims to be the Lagos, the Word of God. Muhammad didn't understand the implications of Jesus being the Word of God because he didn't know about the first verse of the Gospel of John claiming that the Word was God. Muhammad only knew about Jesus being the Word of God from the stories that were popular during his time. So hilariously, the Quran calls Jesus the Word of God. As we read in Surah 4, verse 171, Verily, the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, was only a messenger of God and his word which he committed to Mary, and a spirit from him. Yes, Muhammad was accidentally affirming the deity of Christ even when he was trying to deny it. That's just what happens when you're plagiarizing stories that you don't understand. But look at how the Quran supposedly refutes the claim that Jesus is the Son of God. Like many Muslims today, Muhammad seems to think that when we say Jesus is the Son of God, we mean that Jesus didn't have a human father, so Allah must have stepped in as father and produced Jesus as an offspring. Here again, Muhammad had no clue what Christians actually mean and what Christianity actually teaches. So he responds to his own ignorance of Christian doctrine by saying that Allah doesn't need to have children. He just says be, and it is. Why is this silly? Well, is this how Allah created Jesus in the Quran? Did Allah just say be and that was it? No, Allah was a bit more involved than that. In Surah 66, verse 12, Allah says, And Mary, the daughter of Imran, who preserved her chastity, then we breathed therein of our spirit, and she confirmed the words of her Lord and his books. Notice, Mary, the daughter of Imran. Imran is the Arabic version of the Hebrew name Amram. Was Amram the father of Mary, the mother of Jesus? No. 
Amram was the father of Miriam, the sister of Aaron and Moses. So once again, since Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Miriam, the sister of Aaron and Moses, have the same name in Arabic, Allah doesn't understand that they're two different people from completely different centuries. But what's this about Allah breathing into something? Mary preserved her chastity, then Allah breathed therein of his spirit. Well, we breathe therein of our spirit. Funny how Allah, who's trying desperately to convince Muslims of his unitarian nature, keeps referring to himself with plural pronouns. But what does Allah breathe into? Mary preserved her chastity, and Allah breathed his spirit into her chastity? Sounds kind of incoherent to breathe into someone's chastity, so maybe we should check the translation here. Here's the Arabic of Surah 66, verse 12. Here's the part translated as her chastity. We'll copy this. Arabic to English. Here's the literal translation. Her vagina. Mary guarded her vagina. Then Allah breathed into her vagina. So you can see why translators would translate this as her chastity. To say that she guarded her vagina is to say that she guarded her chastity. But some translators don't try to hide what this actually says. The Palmer translation, for instance, says, And Mary, daughter of Imran, who guarded her private parts, and we breathed therein of our spirit. So, Mary guarded her private parts, namely her vagina, and Allah breathed into her vagina. Why am I pointing this out? Well, according to the Quran, in order to create Jesus, Allah simply had to say, Be. But that's not what Allah did. He went above and beyond. He blew his spirit into Mary's vagina in order to create Jesus. He didn't have to. He chose to. Putting all of this together, we have Allah, the best of all vagina blowers, who's too dumb to realize that Mary, the mother of Jesus, is a completely different person from Miriam, the sister of Aaron and Moses, and who's too dumb to realize that the story of Jesus speaking from the cradle is an obvious late apocryphal forgery, and who's too dumb to realize that Lagos is a reference to the divine nature of Jesus, and who's too dumb to understand what Christians mean when we call Jesus the Son of God, this same Allah plagiarizes an obvious forgery in order to convince his gullible followers that Jesus was preaching Islamic doctrine as a baby. And Muslims believe it. And they expect us to take it seriously. No matter how obvious it is that the Quran is complete nonsense, no matter how many mistakes Allah makes, even in a passage that Muslims ask me to comment on, they still insist that it's clearly and indisputably the word of God and that anyone who doesn't mindlessly agree with it must be evil. All right, well, that's the passage our Muslim friend asked me to make a video about. Let me speak to him directly here at the end. My Muslim friend, since I generously granted your video request, the least you can do in return is grant me one request. And I'd like you to answer a simple question. What were you thinking? <laughs>